Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about Mike Alvarado against Juan Manuel Marquez. Now, let me just say this. You know, boxing really is a subculture. There's a lot of machismo in boxing, right? Boxers always look fearless. They always look ready. They're never afraid. In boxing culture, you don't show pain. Guys don't cry even when they lose at post-fight press conferences. I don't buy it. Right? In my opinion, I believe in real life and in boxing, there are things like depression, doubt, a need for recovery, a need for healing after traumatic events. Right? I believe the folklore, the myth, is that guys can get beaten down and beaten up and get back in the saddle in their very next fight. Right? We always pretend, at least publicly, that a fighter can bounce back immediately. Now, I don't believe that's true. And just like in economics, where right now there are things called behavioral economics, where people are actually going beyond the theory and getting to the reality, I think we need to get real here in boxing. Mike Alvarado fought his entire life to become world champion, to get a title. He gets the title in the rematch against Brandon Rios, right? He loses the first fight. That's disappointment. But he doesn't get dropped, right? In the first fight, he gets dazed. The referee steps in and stops the fight. We have the rematch. He wins the title, right? That's the high point of his boxing career. That's crossing the finish line at the end of a marathon. Then he runs into Ruslan Provotnikov. I believe that if you're going to handicap fights, if you're thinking about betting on fights, you can't just look at what the guy can do in the ring, and you can't just look at the guy's next opponent. You have to look at who the guy just fought. Right? This is just like handicapping football, the NFL, where if you're serious, you need to figure out whether the team you're about to bet on just played the Seattle Seahawks the week before. Right? Prior opponents can really rough up the physical and mental health of a fighter. Right? Before you bet on this fight, I need to have you look at the film of the Richland Provodnikov Mike Alvarado match. Provodnikov beats up Alvarado. He drops Alvarado twice in the eighth round, right? Alvarado, at the end of the tenth round, goes to the wrong corner. Referee Tony Weeks, the same Tony Weeks who just did the Floyd Mayweather, Marcus Maidana fight, goes over to Alvarado's corner. According to reports, Tony Weeks asks Alvarado multiple times if he wants to continue Alvarado, wisely in my opinion, decides he does not want to. Think about the level of disappointment. Right? Forget the physical trauma of having been knocked down twice in a fight. Just physically. That's a handful. Now think about the mental disappointment. You've just made it to prime time. You've just gotten 
the big role in the sitcom and your show gets canceled after one episode right let's just put it this way after a car crash I'm not gonna bet on you in your next race especially if that next race is the Indianapolis 500 I believe Mike Alvarado is not mentally ready for this fight against the worst possible opponent a technician in Juan Manuel Marquez the way I see this fight is I like Marquez I'm surprised the odds are what they are Marquez right now you can get him at a minus 250 which means if he wins you get a 40 percent rate of return right I would hedge that play with Alvarado by knockout in my opinion Alvarado only has a puncher's chance in this fight I expect the older man the 40 year old Marquez to win the fight understand Marquez is by far the worst possible opponent for Alvarado right first Marquez fights at a higher weight class understand Alvarado was fighting at 140 pounds this is 147 pounds right even if Alvarado has had a problem losing weight in the past and I understand he needed an extra two hours to make weight for the Provotnikov fight understand that weight is one of the key variables in boxing it's one of the key indicators right if a guy hasn't fought at 147 pounds we don't know how he's gonna carry that weight right we don't know if the extra weight is gonna negatively impact his stamina as that fight goes forward now we already have the information on Juan Manuel Marquez right Marquez has gone 12 rounds comfortably at 147 pounds against world-class competition he went 12 rounds against Timothy Bradley right Marquez is a warrior who can go the distance he went 12 rounds against Floyd Mayweather right he's not gonna wilt we don't know how Mike Alvarado physically is gonna wear 147 pounds let me make another point too I know Marquez is 40 but this is a day and age when older fighters seem to be able to go 12 rounds Marquez has hooked up with Angel Heredia I encourage everyone to Google Angel Heredia right let's just say he has a colorful background just understand that Marquez in interviews has said he has never felt better physically in his life I believe Marquez is gonna wear 147 pounds a lot better than Mike Alvarado because of Marquez's experience at 147 his track record at 147 and because he has made adjustments to his team that guarantee that he's gonna be nutritionally in tip-top condition let me also point out too that Mike Alvarado's last three fights have been against Brandon Rios two fights and Richland Provotnikov neither Re Rios nor Provotnikov brings the kind of technical brilliance to the ring that Juan Manuel Marquez brings right Marquez simply put is one of boxing's premier adaptive fighters right he changes what he's doing based on what you do back as I like to say in the first Juan Diaz fight and it's breathtaking to watch Marquez figures out as the fight goes along after a tough beginning against a high volume lead puncher Marquez figures out that he can land an uppercut that there's a hole in Diaz's defense that allows uppercuts to land and then Marquez during the fight this is all during the fight it doesn't look like he has the clue early during the fight he cracks the code then he starts throwing uppercuts with both hands that's who we're dealing with 
right? Marquez has literally fought the upper echelon of the division in terms of technical brilliance. He's fought not just Mayweather. He's also fought Timothy Bradley, right? These are technically very difficult fighters to fight, right? Marquez has been in against movement. If there's a problem with Marquez, it's his ability to deal with moving fighters, right? Alvarado is not a mover. I know he moved a bit in the second Brandon Rios fight. Alvarado's level of movement is not the kind of movement that would trouble Juan Manuel Marquez. Right? Let me also point out, too, in terms of technical brilliance, Marquez also fought and KO'd Joel Casamayor. In fact, let's talk about Marquez's punching power. As great as Marquez is technically, and in my opinion, he's right around the top shelf of the sport. Understand, even today, Marquez sports a better than 60% knockout ratio. Right, understand he stopped Manny Pacquiao at 147 pounds. Understand, I mentioned Juan Diaz earlier. He stopped Juan Diaz in that first fight. He stopped Joel Casamayor when they fought. Don't sleep on Marquez's power. So what you have here are two guys. One who's coming off of the worst loss of his career. And he's being thrown in the ring against the guy who is a technical master. Right? You have one guy who lacks experience at 147 against another guy who has fought the very best at 147 and has gone the distance with the very best at 147. Right? You're talking about a guy who, right, on the one hand, has fought bangers. Not big time technicians, but guys who are trying to come forward and take you out. Front foot heavy guys. Rios Provotnikov in his last three fights. Against a master of setting traps on his back foot. Right, who has already been in the ring with the premier technicians. In my opinion, this fight, quite frankly, is a mismatch. It's too much too soon at 147 for Mike Alvarado. I personally feel fans need to ask themselves how Mike Alvarado is in a title elimination match at 147 when the division has names like Alexander, Brook, Thurman, Porter, aren't there a bunch of guys out there who quite frankly should have been ahead in line over Mike Alvarado? Right? Understand I'm a big Mike Alvarado fan. I think he's one of the sport's true warriors. But this is not 140. This is 147. He lost his last fight. And you're telling me that if he wins this fight, he then ends up with a crack at Manny Pacquiao for Pacquiao's title? Doesn't that seem a bit odd to you? Doesn't this seem like it's driven by the politics of boxing more than by whether or not the guy has earned the shot? In any event, I'm going with Marquez in this fight. There's a possibility that Alvarado, who does have a punch, could drill Marquez and that Marquez could get old overnight and get stopped. Marquez has been on the canvas in fights, right? He was on the canvas three times in the first round against Manny Pacquiao. He was on the canvas against Juan Diaz, right? Marquez has been knocked down, but understand, the doubt and the issues that Mike Alvarado has right now after his first career loss 
Marquez is an older fighter who's already survived disappointment. He's already been there. He's already been on the other end of a beatdown by Floyd Mayweather. Let's remember too, by the way, he was down in that fight. I believe only Marquez can win this fight on the scorecards. Looking at films of Breedis Prescott against Mike Alvarado, I thought Prescott was putting on a boxing clinic for portions of that fight. Alvarado was lucky to get the late stoppage in that one, right? I think Marquez is the superior boxer. I think Alvarado only has a chance at a lucky punch. I like Marquez and I expect Marquez to win this fight. If the odds allow, I would hedge the play with Alvarado by KO. Let me know how you see it. Leave your comments for me here online. Let me also say this too. I know many people are going to say, hey Dwyer, you're dropping a lot of hints that Marquez is taking something illegal. You know what? I have no opinion on that. Right? What I'd rather do is to simply have you, the fan, in this day and age of easy research here online, look up the backgrounds of these new nutritional specialists in the sport. Right? All I'm saying is some of these guys have difficult backgrounds to digest. Right? I believe that one of the reasons why boxing needs a random drug testing protocol is because of the track record of some of the guys who are now consultants to some of the biggest boxers in the sport right as I said look up Angel Heredia here online and reach your own conclusions it could be on the up and up maybe guys have changed and now have found ways to honestly you know, uh, enhance their client's performance. But let's just say it hasn't always been that way. And let's just say other sports have records that we look at with suspicion because of the backgrounds of the people around them. So, I'm not here saying one way or the other whether anyone is cutting corners here legally. But what I do encourage serious fans of the sport to do is to research the background of Angel Heredia, who is an integral part, from my understanding, or at least has been in the past an integral part of some of Marquez's camps. Right? Look at the age at which Marvin Hagler retired from the sport. Look at how boxing was. We thought Jersey Joe Walcott was an old man. Right? Now look at boxing today. It's possible that the advancements today are because of, you know, uh, honest and legal technological advancements and an understanding of natural substances such as creatine and uh, athletes better, taking better care of themselves and fighting fewer times. But I will say, I don't take that at face value. Right? Didn't Brandon Rios with one of these celebrity nutritionists fail a drug test after a fight right I believe it's after the Manny Pacquiao fight didn't Andre Berto fail a drug test after a fight didn't Antonio Tarver recently fail a drug test after a fight does anyone really know what's going on with Guillermo Jones, who failed a drug test after his first fight against Dennis Lebedev, and of course the second fight got canceled after, according to reports, another failed drug test. Right? When failed drug tests are happening that frequently, that recently in the sport, I believe all of us need to keep both eyes open as we look at the people around these superstar fighters. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. I'm going with the older fighter. I'm going with the fighter who 
may have lost his last fight, but wasn't in a car crash in his last fight. Right? I'm going with the guy who has experience at 147. I believe Juan Manuel Marquez wins this fight. Let me hear your take. I hope you leave it in the comment section to this video. Thanks for stopping by.